Our next speaker is a guy that's larger than life, a guy that we've all got to know recently. He um, is one of our two regional SME managers in Queensland. He's a big guy with a big heart and he's got years of experience in business and building teams. 20 years in network marketing, 10 years retail experience. He lives in Brisbane. So 33 years of personal development, teaching and training. And he's got six kids, so I don't know which you spend the most time. Six kids takes a lot of looking after, depending on their age. So right, please welcome Peter Martin. And we wish you for a We'll be breaking for lunch today at about 12.30. So we have another little segment after Peter. Hi everybody. Hi Peter. Can you hear me? Yes. That's good. Are we good? Are we not up yet? Can you all tell me when we're up? Um, it's interesting, I, I know most of you from uh, Round the traps as the SME, uh, what do I want? <laughs> SME, regional sales manager, I knew that. Um, and, uh, and it was usually all about solving problems or um, meeting people or talking to people. And uh, but, but my background is basically I've been in business all my life. Time that down? Yeah. Okay, I've basically I've been in business my uh, other than I, I graduated as an engineer originally. Um, that lasted for about two years. Any engineers in the room? Okay, I couldn't stand working with you. <laughs> so, don't take that personally. I uh, just couldn't hack it. <laughs> um, because I didn't have much of a sense of humour. And uh, it was all very bland. And so after two and a half years of being an engineer, I reverted into sales and then straight into business myself and for, for nearly 40 years in, in business. But um, my greatest passion has always been around personal development because when I was um, around uh, 27, anybody heard that John Denver song? Um, I, was born in the, uh, I was born in the summer of my 27th year. Yeah. Come home, rock <laughs> That was last night, sorry. So, um, when I was about 27, so it was pretty accurate, um, I was diagnosed with a, an illness that was incurable, um, and then, so we sort of get into a journey of um, personal development and, and really the personal discovery of what a human being is capable of. And, um, and so, within six months I got rid of that, and, um, and that shaped my life um, all the way through. So, so my greatest passion is to see People like yourselves, people who have put yourselves out on the edge, you're on the, and you know, on the edge of your comfort zone, mostly, to to succeed in this world of of network marketing. And as as Ben so wonderfully put it, it's more about how you think than it exactly is just only about work. Work is an interesting concept because most people only think of work as a physical activity. But the most important work you can do is on changing your mind. Because most of us have, sitting there, after the first seven years of our life, we, we really do have 90% of the blueprint of how we're going to move forward in our life. And so to change that, if we're not going in the right direction, takes a fair bit of work. You know, because if it gets imprinted on the brain, Neurologically and electrically, it's imprinted there. If you want to change it, it takes focus. And it is the one area that most people will not take the time to focus on. They would much rather go and work 80 hours a week than actually take 15 to 20 minutes a day and change their mind. Because if there's a whole lot of people in this room before you were going, pick, you know, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. You can say that all day long to yourself, but if it doesn't penetrate to the core of your, your being, nothing will change 
And then people do it for a while, do it for a while, do it for a while, and then what do they do? They stop. Why? Because they don't see any change. And I remember somebody saying once that, you know, if you think about it, if it's taking you 30 years to get where you are, it may take a little longer than tomorrow to, to, to get to somewhere different. And so personal development, it sort of indicates that you're trying to develop something. My belief is that you're actually trying to discover who you are. And I'm gonna, I'll go through this fairly quickly because I, um, I, I didn't get through it last time, so I'm not going to get through it this time either. I, 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 I have lived far too often. See, we've had one slide and it's about 10 minutes, so it's, if we keep going this road, we'll all get home tomorrow morning. So what am I putting this at here? So the key is to wake up and live. Now that might sound like just a throwaway line, but your greatest ally is your awareness. And most people are fast asleep. Uh, in fact, Plato uh, coined a, uh, a metaphor, and he talked about that most people live their life like a person chained in a cave. And I'm not going to have time to go through that full metaphor, but if you Google it, wonderful thing, if you Google it and have a look at it, what he talks about is the fact that there's these guys chained in the cave. And what they're looking at is they're looking at shadows on the wall of the cave. But what's really happening is going on behind them. So what's really going on in your life is, is out here, but you're just seeing a shadow, so you don't really have an awareness of what's happening. Sometimes we just don't understand that we brought that person into our life because of the way we think. We miss that. That, that connection because of the way we think. And so it's all a matter of beginning to understand. Now, the brain is incredibly complex. And if we, um, and it's, I know it's not your first, but it is today. Um, um, so it's sometimes difficult to understand the brain and the mind, and I'm not going to even try to attempt to explain that, because you know what, that's pretty useless. Um, there's some fantastic stuff on, you know, online, you can go on and you can find about the latest theories around the brain and the mind. The key factor about the brain and mind is can you use them? And I don't mean what you learn at school. Because like what you learn at school is predominantly, any teachers in the room? Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you didn't learn at school that was useful. And, and who had this school? And, and it's quite interesting that a lot of people who are entrepreneurs hate this school because they realise it's the futility of learning stuff. I mean, Einstein once said, that, like, why would you remember a telephone number when you can write it in a book? What a waste to the thing, this thing called memory. And today, I mean, most of you here probably wouldn't remember numbers anymore. I mean, I remember a time when I did remember them, then I woke up to myself and it was really good. And now I have a mobile phone, so you don't have to know any numbers. It's even better. But, but just because there's, there's a whole lot of stuff, it's, a, it's complex. If you go to TED, if you've never been to TED, www.ted.com, there's some fantastic talks if you, if you search brain, neuroscience, and, and I'm not trying to get you to do that because knowing all that stuff is irrelevant. What I am trying to say to you, it is complex, but it is incredibly user-friendly. The biggest problem that we have is we didn't come with a user manual. But then the men wouldn't read it anyway. No, that's true. <laughs> Which is true. There is enough information today, anywhere in the world, for you to get the information on how to change your life to exactly, exactly how you want it to be. The question is, will you seek it? The question is, will you go and look for it and then apply it? Because if you do, you will win. And who's had times in their life where they won? 
and, and most people do. I mean, the, the greatest athletes in the world, they are people who tap in to certain aspects of their brain and mind uh, haphazardly, but usually anchored in some experience. So let's get going. So it often operates in specific laws and principles. All you gotta do is learn some processes to actually open it all up. That's the biggest thing, that's the biggest challenge. And most people won't stop to look in the mirror because most people don't like what they see. But what they're seeing is their self-image, not who they are. Does that make sense? Just, just who you are, if, you, if, if who you are was what you thought, it, it, it would be a bleak day, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> you think about it, a lot of, I mean, who's ever done something that, by somebody else's opinion, will be less than nice? <laughs> Everybody has. I mean, uh, who ever, yeah, okay, who ever flogged 20 cents or two bob from your old man? <laughs> no? Who ever, who ever did something at school like we were supposed to do? Who ever cheated at school? Yeah, yeah, what, you, if you, what you need to understand that you carry that around. Some people carry it around as baggage, some people carry it around as memories that aren't used. But, but the brain never forgets anything. It, it, it's just the most amazing thing. So know thyself, that's the challenge. So they've already covered Plato in the, in the cave. Self-help, terrible term for discovering who you are. Self-help in, 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 in what does that infer? You need help, exactly. Yeah, self help sort of like, you know, <laughs> you're not good to anybody. Um, so it's more about discovery. Discover that you have the capability to remember everything in your life that you choose to. If you have the awareness to do it, if you know how to set that up, you can have a phenomenal memory. And just to say I have a bad memory is that's an excuse but not doing the work to learn how to have a great memory. So what are so what are things like Alzheimer's? No sort of things happen. Well, that's a good question, but I'm not going to answer it today. But if, if you understand the metaphysics of it, it's totally understandable why that those things have become 21st century diseases. It's not an accident. It's the workings of the mind in shutting down things that don't want to be known anymore. So you can, you can release more and more and more of who you are. And in network marketing, one of the greatest gifts you get from being in a business like this is that it puts it on the line that your income is directly connected to the degree that you develop and release and, ex and expose who you are. The more genuinely who you are that is released, the more successful you'll be. Not hiding behind things. So it's just a matter of, you have the power within you, how do you release it? And that's what I've been doing for the last 30 odd years. One of the, there's a great, um, there's a great little um, uh, talk on uh, uh, YouTube by Jim Rohn. In fact, Jim Rohn's got a lot of good ones on YouTube. It's just, He's just a very insightful speaker. One of them is uh, is called the day that turns your life around. And um, the day that you realise that if you want to increase your income, no matter where your income, you you might be making two hundred grand a year, you might be making a hundred grand a year, you might be making ten grand a year. But if you want to increase your income, you have to increase your value to the marketplace. Which is all about, so you're, you know, what, what price you put on a human being? I mean, what, like, how could, you, how could you price it? Well, I'll give you a, a million for an arm, you know, like, a, so, but how do you price it? It's priceless. But the, but the reality is that not many people are releasing their full potential into the world. Why not? Because we don't, we were never taught at school to look in here 
we were, we're actually taught to blame everything out there for why we don't get what we want. The world blames everybody else. Um, you know, like if you actually get into the world of, of medicine, any doctors in the room? So if you get into the world of medicine and you start to understand the reality of germs, the reality of it, like, you don't catch anything. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about that today either. <laughs> but here's the thing, and this, this will be the key, and like, as I said, the, the magic of the, of the network marketing business, the magic of YMS, is that it is a format. It, it, it challenges you to change. Ben said earlier, you've got to grow. Now, I'm not saying you've got to grow, because I don't want to be judgmental in any way that you should grow. It's up to you what you want to do. All I'm saying is that if you choose to grow, that's how your greatest reward will come in the world of network marketing. Because whoever you are today, you have an income statement written on the, on the, um, on the neurology of your brain. That, you know how they talk about females in the workplace and they talk about glass ceilings? Every single person in this room, me, everybody, we have a glass ceiling of what our financial worth is. If you don't change it in there, it's almost impossible to change it out there. That's why people have... I mean, I remember being in a room once with Robert Kiyosaki and, and, and you know, he and I knew each other over about 15 year period and we used to talk about this a lot. And that is this. He worked at the beginning of one of his seminars, he'd get people to stand up who had made a million bucks. <laughs> then he'd get everybody who lost it to sit down. And I was in the seminar once, he had 20 people stand up in a room about this size. And who'd lost it, and they all sat down again. Uh, another millionaire that I know in the US, he, he made this statement, he said, it's very difficult for people to make money and keep money unless they do it two or three times. So if you go broke, get broke two or three times, so if you've, if he's been broke two or three times, I mean, you're on track. <laughs> and the key is breaking through the ceiling that says you can make it and keep it. That is all mindset. That is not the world being nasty to you. It is so easy, given all of our education and all of our background, to make out that it's the world's problem and that's being imposed on me. I have to change the way I think for my world to change. Because my world is a reflection. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to get there, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, that last one there refers to, and I think this is one of the, the, the again, story, metaphor, whatever you want, and go. Uh, but Socrates was taking on a new student. The student said he wanted to learn everything that Socrates knew, all the wisdom, everything that he knew, he wanted to learn. And he said, oh, okay. He said, so follow me. So he started walking along the paths in the city, and then the guy was walking, they were talking, and, and he kept walking, he kept going down towards the, to, towards the seaside and he walked to the edge of the sea and he continued to walk in and the student was walking beside him and he walked out into the sea and uh, it was getting a bit deep and this student was only short and so the student was getting, it was like going in and then go, go, <coughs> and, and Socrates picks him up by the back of his neck, lifts him out of the, out of the water and says, when you want to know, really know, as much as you wanted that next breath, then you can become a student. That's the challenge. It's very easy in our world to be comfortable with being okay. And one of the challenges, again, that you have in, in, is, are you okay? If you're doing well, then sometimes we, it doesn't, we, we don't have the incentive to release from within us 
and go, damn this, I'm going to make this work. I don't mean the damn bit, but the make it look this work bit. So a couple of real uh, short things, um, because this, 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 again, this gives you a little bit more um, hard work to go look at. In uh, Hansberger in 1929, invented a thing called the EEG machine, the electroencephalograph, which is another way of saying you can put a whole lot of electrodes on your head and it tells you the brain frequencies that your, your brain is operating in. He discovered two originally and then later on another two. Um, it all came about because when he was, um, when he was in the, he was in the Prussian army, um, he, um, he had this experience where um, his, he, had a, he was on the battlefield, um, and as it says up there, and he had a telepathic experience between him and his sister. And it just blew away that that was actually possible. Now, if you read enough research and you investigate that enough, it's like ESP is extrasensory perception only because it's it, the people who took the phrase didn't, weren't using their ESP to realise that it's an ordinary sensory perception and it's called sometimes called intuition. Who's ever, who's ever thought of somebody and 10 minutes later they ring them? Yes. Uh, now how did you do that? I mean like, yes. We, we communicate, everything's vibration. The world is complete vibration. Right now there is vibration going straight through you. Everything is vibration. So if you can affect the vibratory nature of stuff, stuff, one of my favourite words, and one of the reasons I use that word is because far too many intellectuals want to categorise everything so that it's then something that you can have. It's like um, uh, somebody the other day said, um, Oh, that kid's got a ADD. Is that, is that one of them? Uh, uh, ADHD. Uh, or ADD. All right. So ADHD or HDAD, double D, D, whatever. Here's the thing. I had four boys. Yeah. 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 Who's, who's that boys as kids? But my boys used to sit on the couch in the afternoon after school, when they were all in their teens, they'd sit on the couch and they'd be watching something on TV and then, and then like, there's an ad. So immediately one goes, <laughs> the other one goes, <laughs> until the ad stopped and then they all go back to me and watch the TV. <laughs> I hate to tell you how many um, uh, light fittings that we had to replace in that house because there was a fairly low ceiling and you know they were always playing basketball or something. Get out of the house! Oh yeah, yeah. After we destroyed. <laughs> so the um, so you know the EEG machine. And basically, what he found was that there are four brain frequencies. I've, I have heard that there's, there's now five. The, the research that I've done says to me these are the four key ones. And because if you can relate to this, probably the, the, the one on the bottom, Delta, um, probably your best relation of that is if you ever woke up in the morning and you have, um, you know, you're sort of like, oh, oh, you like it. Like you're like a bear with a sore head. Who's ever woken up like that? You, 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 you will have come out of that frequency instead of what, what you're supposed to do is to come out of the top, uh, the, the third one up, out of the alpha frequency. But if you come out of Delta, you'll feel like you're like, like a bear with a sore head. If you, if you uh, come out of Theta, you'll feel like a wet dish rag, completely washed out and blah, blah, blah. And, and find it very difficult to get a rock and rolling in the day. Anybody experience that? <laughs> Who's ever woken up just before the arm? Just, just, just before the arm, you go, Whoop! and you're bright as a button. Who's ever done that? You all have one. Don't lie to me, I don't know how it works. <laughs> Everybody's done that at some point. Who's, who's ever, who's ever woken up, or not woken up, sort of woken up, but you, you're in a dream? 
And you go, man, nah, nah, I don't like that. We're going to change it around. We're going to go up here. We're going to do this instead of that. Because you can actually orchestrate the dream. And that woke it up. This is done Yeah. Okay. You come out of the other. The B level is more connected to when you're very stressed and when you're. Your, your, your mind just can't stop. You just go round, 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 and speed and, and you get faster, faster. And so you notice breakdowns when you go way through a beta. Alright? And the interesting, um, uh, the, the interesting thing about beta is that if you connect it back to sleep patterns, people, people are fascinated. There's some people that get really, really, really tired. I'm exhausted. And then they go into bed, put their head on the pillow, and they're wide awake. Who does that? Yeah. Consistently. Okay? So what you've got is you actually have a kinesthetic anchor that anchors your mind to switch from tired to alert when you put your head on the pillow. All you gotta do is break the anchor and you'll never have that happen again. There's, there's another group of people who go to bed straight away. And they wake up in the middle of the night and they're bright as a button at light one and then they can't go back to sleep. Who's ever heard that? Yeah. Same thing. You've just got an anchored pattern that you just got to see through. And, and I've done that with like literally thousands of people. Because it's really, really simple. See, the brain is really simple when you know how to communicate with that part of it that actually controls you, you, like you, don't want to, you don't need to know the neurology. Let me put it that way. Right? You don't need to be a brain science. Here's, here's the thing. You need to know... I've right, done that. You're, you're hitting my head. Oh, Maxwell Miles. This, this book was written in, in 1960. And anybody read it? Psycho-Cybernetics. Uh, it's, it's not actually easy reading. Who, who, would, who would agree with me on that? It's a bit, it's a bit like... Probably, there's a couple of things that come out of it that are really significant. One of them was, he was the first one who really talked about self-image. Um, because he was a plastic surgeon, he got, he, you know, that gave him credibility that this thing, the self-image, really existed. You see, he did plastic surgery on people one day, they come out of the plastic surgery with their brand new nose, and hated it because the self-image, image, the image of themselves that they had internally, that's what they didn't like. But they thought it was actually connected to the nose or the jaw or the hair or whatever it might be. Right? So he was the first one who really got involved in that. Um, and the other thing that he uh, did is a metaphor that's really powerful is that he likened the, the brain to a, like an automatic homing torpedo. If you set it a target, put the homer on where you want it to go, then it would automatically seek and find what, you're, what you want. See, 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 goal setting and all these different things, and I, I know Sierra's talking about this afternoon, and you know, you can do that at a, at, a, at a conscious thinking level, but if you can't penetrate into the unconscious what you want, it will just simply fall away. What happens in physical terms is you gradually lose interest or something like that, or you just tire of it, or you lose the energy for it, whatever you want, however you want to put it. Um, so so the, the key is to actually set a goal to know, the, know yourself. Who are you? Look inside yourself and see. Um, and, and the other thing is that if you work out exactly what you want and you get focused on it, that's what you want. So, so it, it's really important to understand you, you don't need to be anybody else. You're neither inferior or superior to anybody else. You are you, you're unique, there's nobody like you. I know some of you are saying, well that's good. <laughs> but there's nobody like you. And the world is, is waiting for you to express who you are into it 
And as Diane said before, then you make a difference. And again, the wonderful thing you have in this business is an opportunity to make a difference by becoming or releasing or discovering who you are. And then you never get intimidated by anybody. How can they intimidate you when you know who you are? It's impossible. So, this is, this is our, let's just, uh, let's just go back. So, so here's, here's the thing. There are a number of things that are really important. And that is what you read, um, what you think about, who you associate with. I read a really good phrase the other day from Jim Rohn, and he said, he said, having um, lots of friends uh, is worse than having the right friends, and having no friends is better than having the wrong friends. And I, 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 it's one of the things that challenged me when I was bringing my, my, my kids up. The, the, the use of the word friends is so liberal, um, it's just so wrong. Because, you know, the question is, would that person come out in the middle of the night and, and, and help you fix the tire on the side of the road when it's really inconvenient? That's, that, that's more like friends. And a lot of people are very um, cursory. So, so it's not about wishes and hopes. What are your dominant thoughts? And, and one of the things you can do if you're really like desperate is that you can um, get a little booklet and write down all your thoughts for a day. And I have to warn you that if you do that, you'll probably get more and they'll be worse tomorrow. Because what you focus on is what you get. You're far better off starting to read something. That, uh, that book that I was talking about just then is a book called Seasons of Life by Jim Rohn. Fantastic, very simple, short book. Uh, big writing um, for all you book profiles, not. Um, and then, and then, it, as far as goal achievement is concerned, um, then to me there are five ingredients that are, that are that are not ever really focused on, and they they revolve around the, the workings of the mind. One is con congruent desire. In other words, that your desire is real. Um, actually making a decision to get it. A lot of people wish and hope, but don't decide. Um, action, um, as you would be experiencing right now, no action, no... Results. No results, no action, no mula. No action, nothing. We, we, were, we were created to be active and action orientated, not information but the interesting thing about the brain is you don't need any information about the brain to harness it, but you have to do stuff. Action is, what, and there was a really great book, uh, that, and, and, and that is Action Cures Fear. You can take that home and bank on it. If you're concerned about contacting somebody or whatever you like, Action Cures Fear. Expectation. So what do you expect? One of the things that I've been fascinated when you sit down with somebody, it's very easy to see what they're expecting or hear what they're expecting by what they say. Are they expecting the world to be better tomorrow? Are they expecting their income to be better this year? Then, then, then there's, you've got to trade that across reality, whereas you, can, you can't just do affirmations all day and think that that's going to change the world. You know, it, it, it's, it's all about transmitting into the into the into your neurology and changing the way it's operating. And then reinforcement. And I'll, I'll talk about these really briefly. Congruent desire. Thinking Grow Rich is one of the best books you'll ever read. It's just the yeah, who's who's read the secret? Uh, too fast. Who's read the secret? Who's read Thinking Grow Rich? Okay. So it's, the secret is essentially uh, you know, a sexier, well-marketed well the, the thing about Rich. The thing about Rich was written in 1925. 
And it was it was the result of research where he he literally interviewed all of the successful people of that time and elicited from them why they were successful. And he's fascinating. There's another book called that he wrote that's really get hard to get hold of these days, and it's called something that would be if you send me an email, I'll tell you what it is. Is right now my memory is just working on other things. Okay, um, and uh, but it's a phenomenal book, and and he he talks in there about the ingredients of a god, and he's spot on. And one of the things he says in the, it says in that book, he says that what you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. And a lot of people today talk about if you can believe and achieve. But here's the, here's the making of that statement. What does the word conceive mean? Because the world is inside out. The creative nature of, you know, like when somebody invented the airplane, they didn't see it in the sky and didn't think about it. They pieced it together from the universe. It came together in their mind and then gradually it developed over time to what we have today. But it occurred there. So where did it come from? Oh. Where did that come from? It came from somewhere. But whatever, however, whatever you believe, and I'm not getting religious here, but whatever you believe, it came in there and then out here. If you want something to turn up in your world, it has to come in here and then get out there. It ain't going to show up if it's not in here. It, does that make sense? Yeah. It, and if stuff has shown up in your life, you have conceived it. You, you, you're the blame. As Mal often says, if you make a lot of money out of this, it's your fault. If you don't make a lot of money out of this, it's your fault. We create our own reality. We just don't necessarily like to acknowledge that when our reality is not really what we sort of think that we want. You know those problems you have in life when they turn up on your doorstep? You know, the Game of Life. If anybody read that book, Game of Life and How to Play, by um, Florence Scavell Shin. Um, she's actually got an anthology of four four books, and that is a really really good book. That's more on, on the metaphysical side, but it says the same thing. One of the things you have to develop if you're going to totally maximise the use of your mind is the flexibility to transcribe across different mediums to understand that, that we all say the same thing. I had a book, a great book once, it's called Many Paths, One Heaven. Fantastic book. Because what we need in the world, and Fuller was a, 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 a I love your reference to Bucky Fuller. Bucky Fuller was one of the greatest mentors of the, of the 20th century. He was an amazing guy. He wrote a book called Critical Path. And he wrote another book called Operation Spaceship Earth. Operation Spaceship Earth is about this big. Critical Path is about that big. And Critical Path was not easy to read. But what an amazing guy. He created the technology to be able to send electricity out of the US in the 50s globally, globally, and, and have enough electricity for the next 50 years. He, he, he developed the, the um, uh, cabling that enables long, long uh, distance transmission electricity. Amazing man, just an amazing guy. Um, uh, so that, that second book, Critical Path, don't start with that one if you're gonna get a book. Get the Operation Space of Earth, it's, it's much easier to handle. But he actually, um, who's, who's read Jack Canfield and um, uh, Hanson's books, The um, Chicken Soup? He, he mentored those guys, full mentored those guys. Um, he, he's actually behind nearly all of the wise dudes that have turned up in the 90s and 2000s and the Bob Proctors and the Brian Tracys. He's actually behind a lot of those guys because he just was so insightful. Um, anyway, I'll continue there. Um, 
So, so if you can if you can stop for a minute and just understand that your inner world creates your outer world. If you're not getting what you want right now in your life, then go internally and start creating it. And I'll talk about that in a bit more uh, later on. But the, I guess the, 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 the number one thing you've got to do, or that you can do that will help you, is to anal analyze when that's something I was talking about before, when it turns up in your life, how do you know it's in your life? This is not particularly difficult. We see it. We feel it. We hear it. We taste it. You can taste anything. Well, it tastes good, but you can taste anything. Experience it. So the five senses, the starters, we can get a five senses experience of anything in our life. So if you want to completely conceive of something in your mind for it to turn up on your doorstep, then you've got to think about it in the same way. It needs to have the five senses experience so that when you close your eyes, you bring it to mind. And as, um, as uh, Napoleon Hill talked about the theater of the mind, um, then, then what you want to be able to do is to see it, what it looks like. It's somewhere in the Bible, I don't know, I'm not really all that biblical, but somewhere in the Bible it says something about when you can envisage the hairs on a lion's head, it will come to be. Is that right? It is. Anyway, it's something similar to that anyway. That's, that's an adaptation of the, of the real text. But that's what it says. And that is the reality of life. When you can totally experience something in your mind to the degree that it exists in your mind, that's where it will come into your life. And you don't need money to do it. It helps, but it isn't a requirement that it's money. It is a requirement that it's energy. And the energy is putting it into here to get clarity of what it will be like when it's in my driveway or in, my fr in front of me. So, so it's, it's by understanding how the world, that the world's coming from here to there, if you really want to change things, if you really want to become massively successful in INS or in anything you do, in relationships, and they're all the same thing. It comes down to looking inside and working inside. So decisions. Awaken the drive within. Who's read that? If you haven't read it, I, I don't know about the whole book because the whole book's a bit hard too. Some of these, some of these, um, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, personal development people who write books, write awful long books with a lot of dribble in their parts. But if you read the forward of that book, the prologue of that book. He talks about in that book the, the dynamics or the nature of a decision. The problem with most people is they, they don't know what it feels like. So if you're going to, you've got to get a, a, an, an anatomy of a decision. If you can think of a time in your life when you made a decision about something and you went out and did it, if you can get what the feeling was in your body, you can get what you were thinking, if you, if what you said to yourself. If you can bring those back, then you can replicate a decision that gets done. Unfortunately, most people just wish. Oh, you're really good at finest work. Isn't it? Cool. Hey, you do. But it is a decision. I can remember we got we were in a network business. I can remember. The, all those those things there on the day I decided to build our business, and that was about six months in, and, and I, 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 I I remember the decision I made. I had had a gut for. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and and I always maintained that if you're going to break the shackles, it's a, you require a little bit of crankiness, of being angry, not angry at anybody. 
but angry at being stuck in the hole you're in. And I remember going to Steve Copping, uh, who was a mentor for me, and I said, right, Steve, what am I going to do? He told me what to do. I went out and did that, and two years later, we were financially free. Because I made a decision that day. It was not the work I did later. It was the decision I made that day. Action. David Henry's road. What does it say? As we talk in the direction of your dreams, you will find it. It will come. But here's the thing. What does it say? Everybody says you gotta be you've got to work, right? And I reckon that's the greatest statement I've ever heard. The harder I work, the luckier I get. With the right mindset. Because who's ever worked their guts out and gone absolutely nowhere? <laughs> See, don't work with the wrong mindset. You can work, you can work and work and work and work yourself to a grave, but if you've got the wrong mindset, you'll still be broke. Consistent, persistent effort. So what are you expecting? So what you're going to watch is, is what, what's, what's your rooms like of yourself? Yeah, if you don't know, go, just close your eyes, imagine the theatre of the mind, and bring, and just like bring yourself into the theatre of the mind, and check yourself out. I mean, if you're decked if you, if you deck in, if, what, what first things that come to mind of how you appear will be how you think of yourself. So I think it's a really interesting thing, very, very interesting. Um, and, that's, and that's why people get income ceilings, um, from the self-image, that's why they have a relationship repeats. They, they have a breakup of a relationship, they go into another relationship and they have exactly the same breakup of the next relationship because they just marry or the, the other person again. Or the patterns again. So how do you change what you're expecting? One of the greatest things you can do is do something. There's nothing takes the place of activity. Reinforcement. So this, this one of the things that I do uh, constantly. Um, who's read Eat That Frog? You ever read that? If you're melancholy, you love it. If you're a single, you probably hate it. A uh, great book, though. Very short. Eat That Frog. He just goes through step, step, step. One of the things I got out of that book, which is fantastic, is that uh, pretty much every day. I'll write down, I've got a little booklet and I just write down my goals and, uh, and, and review internally that I'm still congruent, that that's what I'm looking for. I don't do it every day, but I do it enough to know I could repeat it exactly now because I know what I'm, I know what I'm after. Uh, mentally, fear of the mind is the way you can construct your future. Emotional. Now, one of the things that the, the um, things inside the Oh, beautiful. Uh, no, this one's right. Well, that's his name. No, this one's right. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, one of, the, one of the recent breakthroughs all, um, you've got to remember everything, about the, everything you ever hear about the brain and the mind as a, an operational uh, mechanism is it, all theory. Okay? If, if you want to write down two words, tan Lee, T A N L E, and Google that girl's name on TED, because I want you to, if, if you do this, you will be, you will understand why I can stand here and tell you that what you do inside your mind changes your world, because she shows on that, that's exactly what happens. See, see, the only reason most people don't do anything with this stuff is they, they, because they can't see it. They're Thomases. Thomas? Yeah. Thomas? Who's Thomas? Who's Thomas? No, Thomas. The guy out of the Bible with the, one of the disciples, Thomas, who he, he wanted to touch and taste and he wanted to see him dead. He wanted to put his hand in that, in the slot. All right? And, and, and so most people don't do anything because you can't see this stuff. You can only see when it turns up in your life. And it will turn up in your life if you start expecting it to turn up in your life and you make sure it's what you want. A lot of people have gone to thoughts about stuff and it turns up in their life and they go, oops, I didn't want that exactly. 
and usually it's delivered by somebody they don't like, which gives them the justification it was their fault. But one of the things that they discovered recently that the, 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 the brain tends to work holographically. And what that means is that every, every um, experience you've had in your life is stored in memory that can be released through an emotion or a sense. For example, who's ever been um, doing something and then you smell a smell and it, like I remember, I was walking along the street, I think it was in um, up the Sunny Coast, and I remember smelling a smell of the pineapple pies that I used to have as a kid when we used to go roller skating when I was in my teens at down the Gold Coast. And I, 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 I really desired a, a, a pineapple pie. Who said that? Yeah. yeah. So, so smell, smell is a very, smell and taste are the two strongest senses. But, but the ones that are a little bit easier to reproduce are more the, the, um, the visual and, and the, 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 the um, what are the other ones? Feel, kinesthetic, oh, yeah, auditory and um, and, uh, and seeing visual. But here's the thing, the wild card, that is why a lot of people do what I was talking about before with the five senses, but don't ever see it come true, is because this. L let me get a distinction here. It's about emotion. Emotion is the greatest ally you have in your life. Anger is a wonderful tool. And one of the challenges I had earlier in my life, until I came to this stuff, was that I was brought up with, it's wrong to be angry. That is absolute not true. <laughs> it is not true. What you, what you use the energy for making it on is the, is, is the point. But anger is one of your greatest allies. You know why? Because when you're angry, you, if you get really angry, you get really, really energized. Now, as long as you don't hit anybody, right, but you take that energy and you put that energy to your goal, that empowers your goal massively. That's why emotion is the key. And here's the thing. If I, let's just say I visualize a car, okay? Let's just say I visualize a car. When I visualize a car and I'm visualizing a, whatever it is over here, there's two emotions that I can choose. I can choose the emotion of, of what only that car would, would be like. Or I can experience the emotion of being in that car and driving it. Now, do you get the distinction? One, one is an emotion of wish and hope. The, the other is an emotion of ownership which is why most people don't succeed in, in, in doing stuff, is because they, they have the emotion of, oh, oh, how exciting, how exciting, how exciting that car is, my car. Yeah, it's my car. It's a very, very fine line, but it's all the difference between creation and non-creation, because it, 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 does everybody know what I, what I mean when I say hologram? So a hologram is if you have a reference beam and you point that reference beam into um, one little square of the picture, it reproduces the entire picture. And that's what the, the emotion is, the reference beam that brings that to life in your mind. And, and, and in all of that, it's finding a purpose. So I think about that recap really fast. Well, you can read, can't you? You got that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, th this is, this is, uh, like I said, 30, 30 odd years of being involved in this stuff and all of the illusions and, and different definitions. Um, personal development is a continual process of the discovery and revelation, the revealing of the power that you have to influence and control your life and the outcomes you desire for your life. Then what it is all about, it's really important. You have to 
participate in your own rescue. If you want your life to change, it is not going to happen unless you are the front runner. You, not the person sitting beside you. I always love the, you know, the couples who sit there and when you say you have to be the front runner. <laughs> I won't, I won't get it. Um, and here's the key. The bottom line of it and everything I teach is that if you can embrace and understand that meaning of that phrase, really understand it, really internalise it, then your life will just go from better to better to better to better to better. But it's, because the thing I realised when I had that, that illness all those years ago was the fact that I, I took on what I read in most of the books on health of people who had survived um, uh, illness and, and that was this. If I was responsible for this disease that I had, if I didn't catch it from anybody else, but if I was responsible for it, that meant that in what I ate, in what I did, in how I thought, and, and, every, and how I feel, everything about what I did created the illness. It might have been the, you know, the blocks of chocolate and the coke and, and all the other junk. But see, my diet didn't change immediately. But I, the moment I said that if I created it, what does that mean? I can uncreate it. If, I, if the chemistry in my body came together to produce that illness, then the chemistry in my body can be something else <laughs> if I influence it in the right way. And so I took all the stuff I've been talking about, I applied it internally, and six months later it's all gone. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm good. I'm saying that because you are identically the same as me. You have the ability not only to do that with your health, but also with your life, with your relationships. I mean, it's, it's, there are so many things. It's just every aspect of your life is emanating out of who you are. And the more you release that and discover that, the greater your life will be. Um, and to me, that's the ultimate definition of freedom. Freedom, freedom, you know, talking about passive income, it's all well and good. You know, you won't get the passive income unless that your mind lets you. And, and ultimately, freedom is the freedom to think for yourself, which is why everything around us wants us to think like everything else, why the media, everything. But you can stay and be all that you can be by applying and learning to know yourself. Um, that, that there is just a brief, um, if, if you want to, to, to know more, you can go to that site, P. Martin Online, um, and you can register. And, and there's, uh, there's a Facebook and a Twitter page that uh, will give you um, some inspirational stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, thanks very much for your time. and. Uh, Go out and uh, just have an absolute ball with your life.